Well, well, well. Valve doesn't care about Counter-Strike 2. They, you know, they developed the entire new, new FPS on an engine that no doubt took a lot of hard work. No doubt took at least some level of intelligence to develop it on an engine which apparently not many people can work in. Not many people are qualified to work in, you know. But no, they just don't care. Anyway, let's let's continue as we mean to go on. Let's discuss the newest update. It's come out like eight hours ago. It came out at a good time for me, but I wasn't really in the position to make a recording or come to it until now. We'll go we'll go over everything. I'll give you my opinion. My honest opinion, right? I I try to keep it balanced. I've got my own opinions, you know, I'm put I'm a participant of many communities all of whom have their own, you know, stances, beliefs, and personality traits and quirks. But I am my own being, and I think it's important to remember that, in any case. Alright? So, a call to arms. Arms race has returned. I'm going to read it all, by the way, just because why not. What else do we have to do in this life except for read? Does it, is this, is the crop good? The crop is fine. Okay. Grab your guns and brace yourself for a chaotic race to the top. Get two kills with each weapon to reach the final stage, or steal your opponent's progress with your knife or now with the Zeus. Work your way up to the knife stage and earn the final kill to secure the win. Go, go, go. They like this go, go, go phrase. I've seen them, you know, repeat it multiple times at this point. Arms race is back, for those of you who care. I mean, I was very shocked that so many people were, like, crying about arms race not being in the game. I'm happy it is. There needs to be at least some functional, non-competitive mode that's not casual. Casual sucks. At least, in my opinion. I know that there are people who only have played casual, really. But, at the end of the day, it's just not my, you know. I would rather play honest race than casual. So in that sense, I'm happy it's there. It's obviously just the same as it was. And, you know what? If it's going to sh sh shut people up, who kept asking for it, then I'm happy for it, you know? It's only a net positive at the end of the day. But it's not something I personally care about. This is a bit more interesting. Custom sticker placement. Stickers are no longer restricted to a few preset positions. Drag, drop, rotate, get your placement right. All weapons support up to five stickers. Get creative. So... I think that there were leaks of this from a while ago. Gabe Fodder and such, they had discussed it, you know, reputable sources and we've already seen a lot of questionable crafts a lot of stuff that would definitely be banned if they could control it in a granular way and we've seen some actual very creative applications and uses of this feature it's a skins thing i like it because it gives a lot of power to all the previously terrible or at least you know relatively useless skins and stickers now if you have a good if you have a cheap skin you can rotate and combine a bunch of cheap stickers that previously no one really cared about and you can create your own piece of art you know you can build your own little easel of paint in the form of stickers and skins and i think that's you know it's something beautiful in terms of the whole economy aspect of it you know, obviously this will probably make stickers go up in price because now more stickers, more valuable. Anyone who's complaining about this change is like actual, they can't be satisfied by anything. They were only in it for their own money and profit. And they were not in it for the love of the game. That's a lesson number one. As I rehydrate myself, I think it's very important to know and that you can, you know, if you haven't crafted this eye test for yourself, Someone who sees this and instantly complains, what are they, what's in there going through their minds, right? Let's, let's think about it this way. Either they are adverse to new things and change, they like things how they work, just purely from a stubbornness standpoint, in which case, you know, that's their own problem and then you deal with that. Or they have an incentive to not agree with this kind of change. They have a craft that previously had value as a four times craft and now people are going to make better ones and devalue their financial investment because they see it as an investment and they don't see it as, you know, something that's cool, you know? And I think a lot of, lot, lot of there are a lot of good people, despite what the, um, a lot of 
people may think there are a lot of good people in the skin community who genuinely do you know appreciate the value of it as like a little piece little piece of art gimmick rather than something else completely and i think that's also very important to not just to not you know, it's not a, nothing is a monolith, really. There are some monoliths, and I think it's fine to generalize in situations like that, right? Uh, like if if someone's makes a generalization and you're like, but there's an exception, then you know you're admitting that there's a generalization on some level, right? I'm sure that's some aspect to it as well. But you should also recognize within yourself, if not in the way you say it, that you know not everybody in one place is the same. And maybe the skins guys aren't so bad after all. That's all I'm saying, in my opinion. The kilowatt case. Backpack brain skins review. Skins stream backpack brain. Pog. Um, new case, new knife. This has been in the files for a while, so no one's surprised about it. And there's a Zeus skin. We just go through all the, all the basic skins. Basic jewelries. It's just like an art piece. It's got an aesthetic to it. It's a nice blue. This skin is very cool. If you see it in game, it's got like a, I don't know what you call it, a parallax effect, like an infinite mirror, infinite tunnel illusion at the back here, which is very, very cool. Something I would consider picking up, you know, hopefully it becomes cheap so that no one can stop me from picking one up. This is just, you know, nice aesthetics. So there's a, quite a few of these scout skins, so I'm not really bothered. This has got a nice little 3D-esque effect to it, which I like. It's also got a funny name. This kind of, it's a little bit overdone on the 3D effect. I think you've done it, it's, it's kind of become an eyesore thing and doesn't work as well for me, in game especially, but I like what I see generally, you know, I like people experimenting. New models, new effects of Source 2 Engine. Another kind of case of intricate design stuff. These are all blue, so I don't mind that they just focus on small details and they're not flashy and everything. This kind of mixed bag, I don't think it works. The effect doesn't really quite work, and it also doesn't really have any aesthetic. Apart from the gimmick, it doesn't have an aesthetic value to me, but if you like it, you like it. This is very cool, especially it's very simple. And when you have it in a high float, it changes color, becomes bronze, brass, which is very cool. If, if it wasn't so expensive, which I think it will be, I will pick one up, but I don't use the A4 anyway. So this is just like the p2k skin that looks kind of similar it's got some colors it's going to be very cheap because no one's really going to want one me included this is a skin for nerds he's been trash talking about it all day or all games just smile just smile it's just another mp7 skin he's an mp7 guy as well he buys that gun quite frequently so this is just a skin for him it's, you know it's kind of graffiti aesthetic it's got that crown from the graffiti as well this is just you know this is a skin that you don't put stickers on, it's just a... You pick it up and you use it, but no one uses the gun anyway. So, NBD. This is like a... Classic aesthetic. It's got a little bit of pearlescence, I think. When I saw it in game, it's got a little bit of pearlescence, a little bit of style to it. I am an A1S user. If this was a reasonable price, I would definitely pick it up. I don't think it is, so I probably would not be. Zeus skin. Zeus skin. It's a little bit too... Like this gold, these gold accents and glints are cool. It's a little bit too, um, like piece of art splattered on top of a skin for me, but it is cool and does kind of, it obviously fits thematically. This is a cool skin. It's kind of like a aggro hyper beast, Mr. Beast style skin. Good art fits kind of thematically. No problem with it. This in game is an actual trip. Like the new metal effects and the way they've done the like warping of the light and everything is very very cool it's gonna be expensive forever this they didn't quite make it shine as much as i thought they would but it when it gets higher flow it like cracks like pottery so in that sense it's kind of cool i hope it becomes cheap and then i would pick one up i don't think you could put stickers on this though i think you would like this to just be a blank canvas kind of skin and then the knife you know it's got very cool animations oh i would you know Still prefer some of the other ones, but it's fine. Victory knife, original finishes, Zeus skin with name tags and stickers and everything. You can see the charge on the Zeus. It ticks up once every 30 seconds. The Zeus, there's mechanical changes. We'll get into the actual impactful changes later. This is just kind of cosmetic stuff. New music kit, shout out Jericho with his little music label. He's got more stuff in the game. New stickers, you see them all there. The, the, the um, 
cool one here. The 1.6 with the CRT, or at least, you know, boxy monitor. I don't know if that is a CRT necessarily. I'm not. I had like, I was at the very, very end of that era. I've had one, but like, it wasn't mine, you know. It was before I had even a home computer. That was just like some random computer that I vaguely remember. This stick is very cool, like the Eco Force and Buy one. This Lotus thing is very cool if if a bit generic, but you need a few generic ones to look very cool. And the rest of these are kind of they're cool thematic ones. They won't really fit on Minecraft except for this one, but oh, the eye was also very cool. I have to be honest. I like this this music kit. Listen, listen, listen to them in game. I'm not gonna go over it all. XP overload. It's um exposes you for grinding. I wonder if it shows up. It would actually. It would, I don't think it would show up for pros, right? Because pros grinding, like, custom servers and shit, it wouldn't give them XP. So unless you get, do, you get XP from Face It Games or FPL. If you do, then Modesty will have this feed everywhere. Um, defeat animations, cool if you like it. Now the release notes, the actual cool stuff, the stuff that matters to me as a pro scene enjoyer and a competitive gamer. Arms race, cool. Weapon fixes, cool. Stickers, cool. Music kits, Zeus, cool. Hold on. Pause. Zeus is reusable after 30 second recharge delay. Now, we can start talking. Previously, you picked up a $200 Zeus. You might pick it up for a gimmick. You might try and troll with it. You might get a free kill. Now, it's reusable, right? If you pick up a Zeus kill, you can keep the Zeus going on forward. It can kind of be a running momentum type situation. It can be very cool. I think this actually means that people will actually keep a Zeus. You know, if you kill someone and they have a Zeus and you pick it up, you're not going to drop it. You might even consider using it. Because if you run out of ammo, let's say if, on, if you're on a force buy, right? This is what I think will be actually useful, not just a gimmick. If you have a force buy with like an MP9 that works in mid range, but at close range, it can kind of be a little bit unreliable. It's worse than a shotgun at very close range, obviously, right? You won't even prefer to have a Zeus at that point. So let's say you do all your spam, you fall back, you get your Zeus out, and you hold that close range angle with the Zeus instead, hoping for that one shot. And that way it's kind of like a very cheap, gambly, mag 7 type of weapon, right? I can imagine if you're holding like a multiple setup, close aim aid and close um, palace on Mirage, for example, something like that would be very viable. It's at least worth keeping now. And I could imagine it at least being usable. I want to see the first, um, what do you call it? Zeus multi-frag in a pro game. That'd be very fun. Smokes now cast shadows. I did a tweet about this, um, recorded a quick little demonstration. You can check that on my Twitter scroll. I'm not going to link it. You're going to find your own demonstration when you play, right? Basically, smokes now have shadows. If In the floodlights, in like, um, I think Vertigo has some floodlights and Ancient has some floodlights where you would see shadows, right? Now those smokes block sh your shadow because they cast their own shadow. They block light sources, so you can hide in the smoke and it won't show your shadow. You can actually hide in it. But if the nade blows up that smoke, it actually exposes your shadow while that smoke has disappeared. And then it recovers it as the smoke comes back, which is very, very cool. Rendering animation, you know, there's some minor changes here and there. You can definitely notice it if you look at it side by side, but it's hard to notice it if you don't look at it side by side. Smoke changes, I'd say overall W. People have been very much complaining about the lighting changes in like Nuke, Ancient, Vertigo kind of, but not really. Those three were kind of the big ones in my opinion. And I think it's gonna become part of strategy as well now. At least it's gonna become like a small part of strategy. Like, like other sort of small audio cues. It's a visual cue. And I think it's gonna, it's gonna add, it's not gonna make it like BS nonsense where it's something that's so unreasonable to predict that you're not going to be able to use it for skill, but it's kind of within that realm of when you can use it, it's like a extra level. Like I can imagine Monacy or Rops, the smart grinders, they might be cerebral enough to nade a position and get shadow info for a clutch. And that's going to be a CS2 moment for sure. Very cool. Um, added refund all button. Thank you very much. There was a bugged bugged up console command that did this they're just kind of probably working on it and now they're given it very useful if you fall by and then your team is like okay we should save this you just click it buy a deagle instead and then buy an extra round. easy disabling first person bullet tracers 
I think this was kind of... They were experimenting with it here and there, right? Initially, it was kind of desynced a little bit. It was maybe visually misleading. You would argue here or there. I think it was, it was obviously visually misleading because the, the shots were not where your thing goes. But also, it was some people was like, it's distracting. It's not how I'm used to doing it. Me personally, I'm happy with them on. I might try it off, see if, I, if it makes a difference. I don't really think it does. But it is visual clutter at the end of the day. So it's kind of neither here nor there. But it's nice to have the option at least. That's fine by me. I'm, I could have been fine with it if they never changed it. But I guess they were thinking of ways to make it uniform for everybody. And then they were like, at the end of the day, you know, it's, we can give you this one. This one is nice. If, if, someone, if you pick up a gun that has a silencer detached, that doesn't have the silencer equipped, you can put it back on if you prefer that way. Even if you don't want to put it, take it off in the first place, which makes sense. Usually, because usually you you don't want to disable reattaching it, right? Because your gun starts with the silencer. So if you pick up one that doesn't have one, you don't want to be locked out of that possibility. Player pings no longer blocked by invisible geometry. This was pretty big. This is pretty big. I use player pings quite often, especially in solo queue, because people don't communicate, but they do see pings. Because if they play other games, they know how to ping stuff. Very nice. Several cases for players sub tick shooting. Obviously, they were going to improve sub tick idiots who think that subtech is not the future. I'm going to call you idiots, genuinely, because people who don't understand that, like, obviously subtick is here to stay. Obviously subtick is going to continue to be worked on. Is it perfect right now? No. Nothing is perfect. There is no perfect solution to online FPS, you know, decision-making, decision, like, breaking algorithm. Ticks are not perfect either, by the way. Or you... Bozo's been like 128 tick perfect. It's like clearly 128 tick is not the be all and, and end all at this point either, right? Right? Like at this point, you're complaining about 128 tick without actually knowing what it would do. I feel like I, I, what I really want Val to do, and this is for myself as well as them, right? And by them, I mean the people who were asking for it. I want them to silently enable 128 tick without pushing an update. Or at least just call it like Vertigo Map Fixes Update and then silently enable 128 tick for like two weeks or like one week because after two weeks someone's going to do their test and be like, it's enabled, it's enabled and then it'll be, the jig will be up in there. But I want them to do it and then after a week, put it back and then be silent and then next time be like, we enabled it for a week, no one noticed, you guys are clueless. I want them to do it. Or if people notice, then they'll be like, you know what? Fair enough. Though, I just want them to try it. It'll be funny, but I, I don't care about 128 tick. I'm going to be completely honest. Pro games can go on. Clearly, they have been going on. So, you know, if they're going to build for one, if they're going to build it for 64 tick, then it should be in 64 tick. Because they're clearly, you know, constructing the sub tick like stuff, you know, the packets or whatnot around delivering it in a 64 tick environment, right? For things to be like decided at the right time, you know, for the edge cases to work, for everything to make sense, hundred percent makes a lot of sense to keep it the same for everybody. Silently drop down vertical surfaces. There were a few buggy um things, just simple bug fixes. This is, I think, some surfing changes, collision issues. Yeah, I mean, we all had kind of when you rush like an engine or whatever, collision issues happened. They they were fixing it for a while. Loadout changes no longer allow while searching. I mean, yeah, that's just obvious. You obviously shouldn't be allowed to do that. It's just, it just makes sense, right? They added some VoIP stuff because there was some audio transmission issues and they added some like audio input device, threshold device, and a meter. So just like basic stuff that, you know, if I'm being honest, that kind of, that kind of stuff is like, when you see it, you're like, they should have had it probably the whole time. But I understand adding it in CSGO would have probably involved like, Traversing the Tangle networking bullshit code of Counter-Strike Global Offensive. And I don't blame them for not doing it, but now it, it was that easy to uh, enable, you know? It was that easy. M new M249 noise, we're never going to hear it because no one uses the gun. This is just um, a button that gives you voice replay. That was a console command, it's always existed. Um, if you didn't know. New Zeus sounds. Visual stuff. Audio stuff, audio bug, good. 
Networking, this is the big one. This is the one where everyone's going crazy, crazy, crazy mode. Reduce peak is advantage in many cases. This sentence alone is going to give people online who think they know more than they know so much fuel. It's almost infuriating, but at the end of the day, we're the ones who win and they're the ones who keep complaining about stuff that I don't know about. At least even when I don't know about something, I'm going to be at least like accepting and open about it. You know, that's my hope at least. So. The amount of peak is advantage in the steady state, so like I assume that means like perfect situation, no like weird stuff, no ping difference, no this, no that, like on perfectly equal setup, that's what I assume they mean, is reduced by 16 ms. Now, it is funny, I will say this on a tangent note, that all this talk about how Valve are the gods of Counter Strike and we're basically like the, you know, what's the word I'm thinking of? The subjects, right? And it's just like, they just change the peak of the market. Like obviously, that's how it works. That's how it works, right? You change the, the way the way that the code, the networking code functions. You change the way the order and stuff in here and there. Like, they can obviously do it, but it's just funny to see them, like, literally rewrite the matrix of the game, right? It's just funny. Reduce the frequency of large peak advantage due to command queue depth. I assume this was some of those, like, obscure clips that got posted and then people were like, CS2 is broken. Like, you know what? Maybe it was broken in some cases. Obviously it was, they're adding fucks, fucks, fixes, new fucks. There we go. Added console command CO tick timing, report breaking down the latency sources. Finally, people can actually, you know, point to what's causing the lag. I like it. I like it. You know, it's good for debugging, especially if you've got, you know, terrible networking situations, they can fix the edge cases as time goes on when it's not a priority anymore to do mainstream updates. You know, there's the networking guys talking about stuff online and stuff. It's probably for them to get an easier access to information that was already there in the game. Added an option to buffer server updates and user commands. Basically, smoothness at the expense of latency. If you've got an inconsistent connection, this is probably what you want to do. My connection's fine, so I'm going to keep it as is, I think. So this overall, they clearly had some aspect of Pika's advantage that they tweaked more towards you know, how it, at least how it was, maybe not how it was is the right word, the right word is probably how they would like it to present itself, right? I still maintain that there was no meaningful statistical changes, but there was clearly a visual feedback change. If you played it or if you watched, you saw that people, the way that people saw each other and the way that things ended up was different and they've changed it. So I've played a little bit here and there, not enough to get a good grasp on what's going on, but if it was good, Oh, good to me before but i think it i'm gonna try holding more angles i'm gonna try playing more like i used to and seeing if it makes a difference you know instead of going for those donk peaks you know rip donk rip donk although donk was like still decent at the end of csgo so he can probably adapt still but i think those wide huge wide swings that donk's been doing those are definitely going to be changed a little bit by the way shout out to um one of my twitter mutuals for putting the idiots out of the weed works and the the absolute dumpsters who don't understand that this applies to LAN games. Obviously, it applies to LAN games. Like, local area network it's in the name. How much does it affect it? Probably less than it does in your 500 ping international queue that you're trying to do, okay? Probably less. But obviously, it affects it. How do you think it exists otherwise? There is obviously a resolution process. Someone has to see someone before someone, right? That's how it all works. So they obviously tweaked it. It's going to change on land as well. Duh. We don't know how much. We don't know what we're going to see. Someone's going to do the videos on it. I can't. Someone will. Watch those. Don't talk about stuff you don't know about. At least keep the option open. Don't be, don't be ignorant on purpose, you know? Asking the question is fine. Just confidently stating you know something that you don't. It is what it is. In-game team only chat will not be prefixed with the team. That's, you know, quality of life. New main menu. The warehouse main menu screen look, looks cool as hell, by the way. Inspect stuff, UI stuff, XP overload stuff, Accolade, stand of match. High DPI, mice, hey, unban the people, by the way. Unban the your command people. I think that hopefully they're still going to do it, though. Hopefully. Animation and demo playback, that was bugged, so thank you for fixing it. Tournament mode, rich presence update. 
probably just some tournament stuff, whatever. Range of raiding to that party together, it was already pretty fucked up, I think. To be honest, so I don't know what they're gonna change. Just some map, map fixes everywhere. I actually I haven't looked through this entire thing, so let's just, you know, it's mostly just collision and bugs. Nade collision, gaps, and visibility changes. They've been doing this over and over. Inf Inferno, new Inferno, kind of. Initially, it was like an artist's project. Literally, it was. And now they kind of made more and more competitive changes based on people's feedback, which is fair. I have no problem either way. The, the one that was from library, like short to library, that one was big. Because the barrels before was like confusing as hell, in my opinion. More collision. Bunch of hole fixes. Bunch of boost fixes, collision, clip brush from apartments, fixed play getting stuck when strafing on middle ramp by simplifying geo or floor and wall. And I think I saw that once, but I don't remember. More collision, more collision, more bug fixes, etc. So overall, you know, if this is like the pre the pre major fix basically. This is this is gonna tide you over until the major and then afterwards. After the major, you're gonna get your big like other stuff, you know? After that you get maybe your operation, your this, your that, you know, all the other stuff. Until then, this is like what I expect the major content to be. Fixing all the little like bugs and actual problems up until the major. And the RMR, which is happening in a week from now. And I think it's this is gonna tide us over, you know. All the people crying for content, this is enough for you for now, you know. Now, if you want an operation right now, I mean, just play CS, you know. Operation is not gonna change anything. First of all, um, if you want left hand and CL, Bob, stop crying. Unironically, stop crying. Clearly, it's not a technical difficulty that's preventing them from adding it, right? In my opinion, if the, the only way that they'll add left hand is if it's permanent from when you start and you can't switch it. That's the compromise that you're going to have to make if you want left hand. You're going to have to be like, okay, you decided before the game and you can't, it's like part, it's part of your loadout basically. And then your shadow is the same, but then it, you know, they're more likely to restrict view models in my opinion as well, because that changes how you view stuff. It's kind of similar to left hand, right hand, but. You know, if you don't, don't be too loud about it is what I'm saying, because they can easily restrict that because that's that's still some customization stuff that doesn't match what you see. It's not entirely what you see is what you get, you know, but at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter to me, at least because it's pros and cons to all of them. I'm not playing with the Doom view model, though, and. You know, I hope this tides everyone over. I hope people are happy with it because people have people can't stop talking about how Valve abandons Counter-Strike and then when they, they add an update, they still manage to complain. You don't deserve the game that you get. Simply put, everyone who puts money into skins and stuff, me included, they didn't ask you to do it. You, they're not responsible for the ups and downs of your fake investment. Invest in skins, not because you think it's like a fucking stock diamond hands to the moon. Do it because you like the game. Do it because you like the skins. Do it because you like the content. Don't do it because you're like, oh, this is a good investment, you know? Like, I, sure, I bought Paris capsules because I was like, I got a bunch, I got some expensive sticker and I'm like, how am I going to make a good liquid thing to get this out somehow, right? Because I don't want $700. I might buy some Steam games. You know, I sold some of my stuff to buy, like, go make a ball, buy some DLC for games I like. If I have nothing else to do, I might open 700 capsules and apply the stickers, sell some of them, buy games, etc. That's how you're supposed to do it. I don't even mind third-party, you know, market sites and stuff like that. That's fine by me. I'm signed up to some of them. I think, I'm, I, think I have like a buff account, technically, because they let you make it. It's fine by me. It's fine by me. Just don't act like a bitch about it, simply put. Anyway, it's been back. Ben. This is the content review. We'll play some CS after this. We'll enjoy ourselves. And I think, you know, keep it real and keep it fair. Those are my, those are my ending words.